Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, are you ready for us to make our demand? Let's go. Say after me. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hear me? This should be your pattern on a daily basis. Why? Because God is doing a new thing in our lives. When God gives an instruction, you obey. And remember what Hezekiah said. Jehoshaphat, sorry. Remember what Jehoshaphat said. He said, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe also in his prophet and you shall prosper. So you already know that this is God's way. This is God's principle. All right. So believe me that when I say God said, that's, that's what it means by believing in his prophet. Believe me that God said we should do this. And what's going to happen to you? you're going to bring about prosperity in your life. Praise God. And also join the 12 noon prayer meeting. Things are changing in your life. Your, le your financial level is increasing. Listen, if you are in debt, whether mortgage debt or whatever debt you are in, you are coming out in this season in the name of the Lord. That's the grace the Lord said we should begin to release at 12 noon. So join that live prayer meeting and your life is going to change. Praise God. I know that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for today's broadcast. Thank you for your word. It comes freely by the anointing of your Holy Spirit and is ministering to every heart, removing burdens and destroying yokes. Thank you. Oh, I give you praise in Jesus' name. Healings are taking place even right now. Yeah, healings are taking place. If you are sick in your body, you are healed. Just, just as you open your heart to receive the word of God, healing is coming to your body. Even now, someone, this right, your right eye, there's, there's a pain going on in that right eye. And as we're praying, I, I saw that and I declare right now, you are healed. I command that pain to go from you right now i command that pain from the root whatever the root cause of that pain is right now i command it to leave you in jesus name amen everything that has made your chest to be tight i command it to be loosed right now right now place your hand on that chest someone you're feeling a tightness in your chest and sometimes you feel kind of breathlessness put your hand Right. You see, it's not time to begin to think what caused it. This is the anointing of God's spirit walking and he's bringing liberty to your spirit, soul and body. So I command whatever is causing that tightness to release you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Be free. Be free in Jesus name. Amen. Several things the Lord is doing. But we've got to teach the word of God. But hear me, if you're sick in your body, just get up and begin to do what you couldn't do before. I don't have to call your case, but just get up and begin to do what you couldn't do before. And you will realize that you are healed because the Spirit of God is at work. Turn your Bibles with me, praise God, to Romans chapter 15. And I'm looking at verse 13. It says, now we're talking about the purpose, hope, and manifestation of God's calling in our lives. So it says, now the God of hope fills you with all joy and peace. While you are hoping, he says, he fills you with all joy and peace. And he says that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. You need to abound in hope. Now, what does it mean to abound in hope? It means to have surplus hope concerning that thing that you are believing for. You start by believing. And by believing, you find hope. Now, how do you get hope? I'll show you something in this same first, uh, Romans 15 and verse 4. Verse 4, I want you to follow this now. He said, For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning, that we, 
through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Did you see that? So everything that was written before, even the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation, they are written before. All these things were written for us to have hope. Why do we have hope? When we read the content of how God dealt with, with the children of Israel, how God dealt with the prophets of old, how God dealt with those who walked with him, that's why I always tell you, the Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who walked with God or who heard the voice of God, who believed the voice of God and what came out of their life. That's what the Bible is. So this is a very important book you must have, not just have, read. Because you are, you are, you hope to walk with God, right? Now, you need to look into this book and find out the people who walked with God, how did they walk with God? What was the beginning of their life? What was the end of their life? So he says, all these things that were written before were written so that we, through Comfort of the scriptures, they were written for our learning. So we read, we learn. They were written for our learning. So that we, through comfort of the scriptures, these things that have been written already, through the comfort, meaning when you read the scripture, it's comforting. You never, you never read a, of a man who consistently walked with God and ended in shame. No one in this Bible, not one, no one, who consistently walked with God and his life ended in shame. No, sir. So why did he say this scripture gives us comfort? It is because the end result of everyone who consistently walked with God ended well. Praise God. No one ended in shame. No one ended in a sad note. No one. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, meaning, when you read this Bible, when you read the stories, read the story of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the prophets of old, Joseph, read the story of David, read the story of everyone that ever walked with God. Their lives ended well. So, he says, it gives you comfort. So, what does that do to you? Hey, I'm going to walk with this same God. Now, when you begin to make that decision, hope is being formed in you. So the scripture gives you comfort. And by that comfort, you will now have hope. See, I'm not going to give up today. Why? Because, see, I'm going to walk with this same God Abraham walked with. I'm going to walk with this same God Isaac and Jacob walked with. I'm going to walk with this same God David and Joshua and, and, and Daniel walked with. I'm going to walk with this same God. I'm going to walk with this same God King Hezekiah walked with. Praise God. I'll walk with him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And what happened? Hope is being stirred in your hearts. Praise God. And then now he tells us in verse 13 that the hope can come by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Holy Ghost. So we receive hope. I told you yesterday, I said you must deliberately receive the hope. So now, let's say you're in a financial situation. Now, that's not what we're talking about here, but I'm, I'm getting you establishing the hope first. So you, let's say you're in a financial, you don't know what to do. And then you pick up your Bible and you begin to read and you begin to read. And then you read the story where Elisha told the Samarians, you know, king of Samaria, said, look, by this time tomorrow, Things are going to change for good. I mean, things are going to be so cheap, sold at the gates of Samaria. And then the, the, the person the king sent said, look, even if God opens the windows of it. Now, these are thoughts that go through our minds on a daily basis. You're in a situation, you've thought of everything that you can do to get out of that situation. Nothing is working. Maybe you lost your job and you were planning that by the time, you know, every month you save a part of your salary and by because of that, by the time your rent is due, you have enough money to pay the rent or the school fees of your children, you have enough money. But now you lost that job or you lost the business you were hoping on. You understand? Or maybe a contract was supposed to come to you, but at the dying minute, someone has taken it. Now you are in their need of, of, of finances. Now you are in debt. Now you are in a situation you've looked right, left, center. Nothing 
seems to be coming forth. But hey, what if God tells you that son, by this time tomorrow, all your bills will be cleared. And say, ha, ah, hey, oh, where, how, how is this going to happen? Hey, but it's happened before. Now, when God is telling you by this time tomorrow, like I've always said, when Elisha prophesied that prophecy, by this time tomorrow, guess what? Everything that needed to fulfill that prophecy was in place. It was in place. All that needed to be done now was the connection. <laughs> and that's what those four leopards did. They did the connection. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how God uses seemingly people? <laughs> people you never consider. That's the one God is going to use. And it's the same thing. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. God can use that your security man to bring a great blessing to your life. You don't know that. You don't know that. That's why the Bible says we should be careful to entertain strangers. We should do into to entertain people, you know, entertain strangers. Because some, some have even entertained angels on our ways. So you treat people right. You know why? Because you don't even know who God is going to use next. I've, I've seen God use amazing people in my life. Praise God. When I mean amazing people, people you will least expect. I mean, people who even when God tells you that person is going to, you say, Lord, <laughs> this one, <laughs> Lord, just, just leave it. No, let's, let's think of something else. But he does use people like that. So what? Never write off anyone. Treat people right. God sends people around you, treat them right. They may be your house, they may be your security men. But hey, remember, name um, Naaman. Naaman, it was the steward, the lady, that, that little girl that brought him deliverance. Now imagine, great general needing help, full of leprosy. It was that girl, who we'll call house help today, praise God, that said, sir, this is your condition. Can I speak, sir? So what is it? This is your condition. There is a prophet I know who have dealt with things like this. And I'm sure if you go to see him, eh, where is he? Told him. Mm. Okay, let me go. And then he went. By the time he met the prophet, the prophet didn't even see his face. He just said, go and wash in the river of Jordan and you'll be well. And the guy said, can you imagine? A whole general like me. How? What, what will people say when they see me there? And they were like, mm. the man did not even come out of his house. He, didn't, he, didn't, didn't they tell him, I'm General Neyman? <laughs> then the girl spoke again. See, listen, when God has planted people in your life to be of help to you, the girl spoke again and said, Sir, think about it. What if he had told you to bring all your money? But this little thing he told, why don't you just obey first? Hmm. All right, let me obey. He obeyed and he got healed. Praise God. Who did God use? That little girl, that insignificant girl. No one is insignificant in this world. Everyone have their role to play. So you might be in that death situation and God will speak and say, tomorrow by this time, you will come out of all debts that you're owing. And I, how is it possible? And then, see, what do you do? Believe God. Thank you, Jesus. You believe him. And when you believe him, you just keep trusting him and, and walking. And then you just step out and the security man say, Sir, there is, there is one news I heard though. I don't know whether it's true, sir, but I just say I should tell you. What's the news? I heard that uh, they announced that something, something like this is taking place. Like, really? Where? When did you hear this? Sir, this morning I was listening to that my small radio. I said, ah. Okay. And then it begins to brood in your mind and brood in your mind. Say, oh, let me go check it out. And you go check it out. Suddenly you realize you are the one everybody's looking for. And then something is signed, a contract is signed, release is made, and you're out of debt. That is how God works. So when God speaks to you, it is not when after speaking to you, he begins to think of how to sort it out. After, before he speaks to you, he has sorted everything out. It's the right connection and you're believing that he is getting to connect together. Praise God. Our time is up today. Sometimes just like, ah, praise God. Don't worry. I'll see you by 12 today. Join the online prayer meeting and be 
blessed. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.